Hey y'all, Chris Short, part of the Red Hat Cloud Platforms business unit. I am also a part of the OpenShift uh, technical marketing management team. I am very excited to announce that we are launching a Twitch and live streaming effort uh, starting uh, right now. Uh, if you are seeing this video, you are watching the beginnings of it. We are very excited to have a full week of content lined up uh, with more content in the pipeline to get you educated on all things cloud native and OpenShift and Kubernetes, as well as some of the more um, you know unfamiliar areas of technology right now, like 5G and Edge. So we're looking forward to that. We're looking forward to putting you closer to the technology than you've probably uh, been before, as well as the technologists that build it and work on it every day. So hang on tight, stay tuned to twitch.tv slash redheadopenshift, subscribe, get your notifications from Twitch, and I promise you, you'll have a great experience and learn a few things along the way. Thanks. Hi, my name is Grisha Hernandez. I'll be talking to you about OpenShift's core platform, infrastructure, and some fun GitOps automation. Hi, I'm Eric Jacobs, and I'm focused on AI ML topics on OpenShift here in the Cloud Platforms Business Unit. My special talents are breaking things and making engineers second guess their decisions, and you get to see me do it live. Hi everyone, my name is Amy Marish, and I'm on the Cloud Platforms team here at Red Hat. And my specialty is OpenStack. Hello everyone, my name is Andrew Sullivan. I'm a Technical Marketing Manager with the Red Hat Cloud Platforms Business Unit. In my role, I'll be discussing virtualization with KVM and Red Hat Virtualization, as well as containers with OpenShift and Kubernetes. I especially like to talk about infrastructure, so compute, storage, and network, as it relates to those two products and projects. If you'd like to connect with me, please reach out on Twitter, at PracticalAndrew. Hello, bonjour, assalamu alaikum, hola. My name is Jafar, and I'll be happy to host several sessions on our Twitch channel to talk about OpenShift, container native development, CI, CD, DevOps in general, so I hope we see you there. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Hi. I'm Langdon. I'm an expert in developer tools such as Odo, Podman, and AppStreams. You can also ask me about OpenShift Serverless and Service Mesh. Follow me on Twitter. I'm Langdon with a one. Hello, okay. I just have to redo all my inputs for whatever reason. Yeah. Okay, getting better. Slowly getting better here. Wait I for think, it. I think we might be good. I think we yeah. might be good. So, I I hear things coming out of my audio. Are they coming out of the Twitch stream, though? Yes, they are. Hey, I think we fixed it. Good job. At least we know it's truly live, somebody says. Yes, thank you, yes, Munchie. It we is are truly definitely, live. We are definitely doing it live. Okay. We I are think you doing can it live. We can hear you now. Woo yes. Yay. We can hear you now. Awesome. Oh, I'm not wearing Welcome, a, everyone. I'm wearing a card shirt. I feel like a dweeb. I should be at least wearing an OpenShift shirt. But Well, I've got the OpenShift hoodie and nice. a Twitch shirt on for those that can't see. I've got a Twitch shirt. Yeah. And, you know, it is Where Star Wars Day, I hear. So I've, it's Star Wars Day too, though. So I've got the and Star the, Wars Rebel and Alliance the Rebel flag. flag. Oh, yeah, man, cool. I've got it all going on. So Twitch, you can actually there's actually Twitch like merchandise on Amazon. So I just added it to one of our Amazon orders, and boom, there it was. One of our Amazon orders. <laughs> no, the, well, I mean, you know how it is these days, Eric. Yes. There's a bajillion Amazon yes. orders, upon upon uh, pickup orders and everything else. It's it's uh, yeah. 
there's a lot, a lot of picking up of things in our household and orders being delivered right now. Picking, picking up and putting down. Anyway. Um, yes. Yes. <laughs> so welcome for those who are, I don't know, I guess technically people are first time viewers, although we've, we've been secretly somewhat hiding Quietly, this for a while. Yes. So slowly trying to keep things uh, under wraps. Uh, as to not step on anyone's toes during Summit or, you know, anything like that. But the idea was we were launching this puppy right after Summit. And here we are, May 4th, the week after Red Hat Summit. Yeah. Live streaming to the world. We've got a blog up here officially and everything. I don't think I have. You know, so I don't have. So hang on a second. I'll show you something. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Eric is our, uh, you know roundabout person that literally has stuff that you would normally not think eric would so have, i don't have eric like has things star wars stuff in terms of like like a cool memorabilia flag or whatever but what i do have is this wicked awesome second <sighs> edition star wars rpg d6 game book that i've been hanging on to for forever um which coincidentally happens to have um a character sheet in it oh yeah yeah Oh, yeah. Cyborg, okay. Cyborg Pirate Gel Tech. I don't know. That's what it says on it. Objectives: Dang. to kill and steal to get rich. There you go. All right. That's, that's the from from the minds of a fourteen-year-old, right? But anyway. Wow. Oh, and for, then I have. Thanks for sharing that with us, Eric. Game thing in there. So that's my that's my Star Wars stuff that I happen to have in this room. I don't Star Wars I, extent. I don't know what other. Yeah. Star Wars so stuff it's have. it's funny, right? Like there's there's levels of Star Wars that like. I'll get into with like my wife and she's like, you've gone too deep. Like, and, 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 but then like, if I go into it with like my father-in-law, it's like, yeah, let's keep going. And then like, he'll get going. And I'm like, you've gone too deep. Oh, so, so are you, are you like, one of those? Like, uh, like what's the, what's the number of the garbage shoot or whatever that they were in? Are you one of those? No, I don't know. No, no, Lord. No, 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 no. I am very much a, I like Star Wars. I actually appreciate more of the, the special effects that go into oh, it and a lot okay. of the, a lot of the, the back behind the scenes, like, you know, stuff that's become, uh, come out of, you know, what is it? International Light and Magic or whatever the company name is that does all the, you know, data center rendering stuff. So, yeah. Having like that technology background associated with the movie th theme like really ties it together for me. Mm -hmm. So yeah, mm -hmm. I'm very, very much into Star Wars in the sense of the movies, not necessarily the expanded universe. If that makes sense, mm -hmm. I'll play a few of those video games too. Right? Like what was it? The the mid or the early two thousands video games were really good. Oh, that's um, that's funny. That's when I stopped playing. I think the Star Wars ones. The last the last real Star Wars games I played were well, it's not entirely true. So technically. There was a tactical game that they had made. Um, Battlefront? Nope, not the RTS. It okay. was. Um, I'd have to look it up because I can never remember the name of it. But it was like uh, you could play as either the Rebels or the Empire, and it, you basically like it was a turn-based strategy game where you controlled systems and had to um, uh, like manage production and the economy and all these other things. And oh, I, I need this game. Star Wars Rebellion? Maybe. No. It was, it's like an old one from the 90s. Um, I'm hesitant to click Let me see if I can link it up on my side. <laughs> List of Star Wars video games from Wikipedia. That sounds like a good one. Let's see. You said it was from the early 2000s? Uh, yeah. PC, right? Now yes. I'm assuming. It was none of those, so maybe it was the end of the 90s. Yeah. Rebellion, RG, I Rebellion. believe. Yeah, uh, maybe? Maybe. Known as Supremacy in the UK and England is a real-time strategy game released in 1998. No, I don't think that's it, man. Oh, now like I want to know what this is so I can go find it and actually play it. The good news is there's not many decades we have to go back. The bad right. news is there's decades we have to go back. <laughs> yes, actually, it was Rebellion. Okay, I'm looking at screenshots It was Rebellion. Now. Yeah, yeah, man. Okay. It's awesome. I The real-time threw me for a loop, but I guess technically it is real-time. It's not turn-based, but it's very okay. slow real-time. 
It, it, yeah. Well, I like that. I mean, like my favorite game to literally play right now, like in my downtime to like let my mind relax is uh -huh. Civ Six. So like Civilization Six with all the expansion packs. Yeah. Like I blow money like uh, nobody's business on that stuff, right? Like <laughs> I love Civilization games for whatever reason. Uh, I don't know why. I don't know what it is no, about them. I'm into city but... builders, man. So my one yeah, of my no, favorite... like that's where. Oh, I love city builders. Go oh, ahead, gosh. man. So two, two the, I know we're totally nowhere near open shift right now, but so two old mm -hmm. video games of mine that are like got several classic favorites of mine. Um, Centurion Defender of Rome. Okay, heard of that one before. Ancient. Heard of that one. I mean, that's like we're talking uh, early '90s, maybe. Centurion Defender. Defender of Rome. Yeah, it was a, specifically a video game. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. there it is. God, oh, that brings man. back so many memories. I almost got chills. So anyway, okay. so this game's rad. Um, then there was uh, Colonization, which was a Civ 4 mod from them. Or yeah, for the iOS. No, platform, it was right? no, no, no. So so the iOS colonization is way late. So they they did Civ 3. Right, so the first colonization was a mod on either Civ 3 mm -hmm. or Civ 4, I can't remember. Then they remade colonization much later, and then that's the one that you found on uh, right iOS or whatever. It? So uh, Okay, so you like the old one. Well, the, the newer one was good, but it was, on, it was also on PC, but I, I found it really hard, even on the easiest levels. Like, I don't know. Oh, really? Anyway. Okay. Well. Um, no, colonization is probably of, a hard thing. I've Sim never cities. done it before. Yeah, yeah, definitely was. Colonization is <laughs> a good one. If you're into colonial whatever, colonization was a good one. Because one of the other ones that I was really into was Sid Meier's Pirates, the first one, which oh, was yeah. an awesome game. So I love the like economic trading aspects of city builders, mm -hmm. um, which is always fun. All the new city builders, like I just get wrapped up in like oh there's too much traffic in my city this this stinks and right I get, and like I that's bored and don't want to play what is it city skylines i love that game yes, until you I hit like a certain like threshold of like city size and then it's like now i'm a project manager no yeah. offense but yeah. like i'm literally like i've never a played skylines long enough to get out of like the, the first box you know how like think, you can buy yeah, multiple like, yeah, you can expand yeah, yeah. your city into other, you know, like boxes I, in the on the map or whatever. I think I've done it for resources, but that's it. Yeah, right? yeah. So I, I've never made anything really bigger <laughs> than the first one, and I usually get bored halfway through. So, uh, and then I started playing Surviving Mars, which is actually pretty cool. Hmm. By the way, we've been told to port uh, Star Wars Rebellion into OpenShift in a container, which oh, I can do that. we could sort of do, probably not as a Windows container, but we could do it with CNV. And then run yeah, we Windows could totally do it with CNV inside a CNV container. Uh, yeah, what is what was this game? This last game you mentioned. The last game I mentioned. Yeah. City Skylines. Not City Skylines. After that, you mentioned something else. Uh, oh well, we'll, we'll catch you. So uh, Centurion Skylines, Colonization, Sid Meier's Pirates. Um, oh, Surviving Mars. Surviving Mars. Okay. That's a cool one. So basically, you you have to build a colony on Mars. Um, it was available for free. Oh, there it is, on Epic, for a minute. Um, oh, okay. But it's actually pretty neat. Like, uh, it's one of these games where people matter much more, and mm. so you have to manage the sanity and happiness of oh, the colonists. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because when there's like six people on Mars, and you know, That's there's nothing to important. do. Like, yeah. You know, they they start to lose their minds. Jafar cool. says, "Oh yeah, X-wing, Tie Fighter. Yeah, those were awesome. I played mm -hmm. played all those. Yeah, all those games were great. Anyway, sure. anyway, we should talk about OpenShift. Yeah, you know, we should probably talk about OpenShift on the Red Hat OpenShift uh, live stream channel. The uh, let's see. So you know, I've got. You said there was a blog. There was a blog about us going oh. live. Is here. That, that's, that's somewhat Inception like. Is it somewhat Inception like? We we blogged about." thing that we're doing and now we're, we're talking yeah. about the blog about the thing exactly that we're doing so while we're what, doing ba it? basically what i'm telling people is that we have a week of content lined up for folks working on next week's a schedule whole right week now of exciting we right. even got more content today don't we 
Yes, we have something later today, creating an Ansible operator from scratch. Uh, Christian Hernandez, J. Dobies, and myself are going to all join up and uh, crew, unite right our Ansible operator powers and create something <laughs> magical. Uh, <laughs> tomorrow, Andrew and I are going to be jumping on and doing some uh, uh, OpenShift uh, IPI, which is the... Uh, infrastructure automated provision installer yeah. automated installer that we have uh for uh, red automated. hat virtualization so yeah like this one is exciting for a lot of people because they already have like rev stack set up and now they can just you know similarly click button push to other platforms uh ocp deployments um after that uh you and josh woods Me. Uh, yes, uh, on on May sixth, are doing your uh, monitoring your app with OpenShift and Prometheus. Uh, we try to. You want to. We're going to try to. So you know, we might, we might fail miserably, but we'll see. I don't think so. Well, I think that's a that's that's the, that's something important to note about uh, the channel here is that we and fully intend like to start doing things, and it's entirely possible that we might not totally get it. Right, oh, like my, it, it, my, it could my, totally fail, my, and that could be the outcome. On Friday did not did not go well. I yeah, spent, no, we, we spent I, the first forty five yeah. minutes just trying to figure out how to run the container in a way. Well, it's it's not entirely true. So it was a container that wasn't designed to run not as root, and so I spent a whole bunch of time like trying to get mm. it to run not as root, and right. then got frustrated and gave up because I would have had to modify their startup script and all this goofy stuff. And so then mm -hmm. I was like, okay, cool. Well, I'll just relax the cluster permissions. But then it took me a while to figure out how to do that because it's different in OpenShift 4. Well, actually, it wasn't different in OpenShift 4. It was just the docs that were different. And so oh. I talked to the docs person. Um, cool. And so one of the benefits of us screwing things up and, and not finding what we want in the docs is that then we get to go talk to the documentation strategists and say, hey, can you maybe like put this in the docs so that I don't well, that is definitely on live TV. Yeah, that was definitely something that we learned from uh, our workshops last week during Summit was mm -hmm. that there was definitely some capability to, uh, hey, docs team, can we enhance this piece? Or, hey, uh, you know, operator framework team, can we tweak the wording here? You know, and so getting that, getting these things actually fleshed out kind of live does indeed actually help us as a company, right? Like, yeah. Um, if we have, uh, problems live on this Twitch, then, you know, we can then take those and port them back into the product, just like we do, you know, with our customers, um, you know, as they have problems and pick them up, we bake them into the products. Anyways, back to the schedule. Okay. Um, so let's see the seven tweets about what we're doing here and get the, yeah, get the thank you. Now. Yeah, 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 I need to do the same thing. So uh, on the seventh Thursday, deploying and using OpenShift virtualization. So Andrew and Reese and I, mainly Andrew and Reese, because I will be uh, behind the scenes a, a lot of this. Um, but this is one of the coolest things that I'm like most excited about this week, because uh, when the when when I was asked to, hey, we need like a Windows uh, thing, a uh, QCow file for <laughs> you know, the SQL server so we can you know, test Ugh. OpenShift virtualization, right? That does not like sound I was, I immediately stepped up to the plate, grabbed a beta version, converted it over, got it all synced up so that we can reset it whenever we need to. And I actually put it out there on my CDN and then like Jafar did a demo of it uh, for the, the, the Cody folks. And oh, that's immediately, right. Yeah immediately people were like hey can i get that qcal file and like we're like and andrew was like reporting a bug or he needed some drivers installed someone else was reporting a different bug and it was like oh my gosh wow okay so this thing's taking off uh so like i'm excited just because like we finally get to actually put our hands on this thing and actually mm -hmm. use it like the idea of running any kind of container you want inside OpenShift is amazing to me right like so as any any kind of container now we add on any virtualization anything. yeah like like as we get towards that full-fledged virtualization kind of thing inside openshift oh boy hang on tight you know your legacy workloads matter not bring them with you you know <laughs> we can get them in your cluster uh then on thursday or friday sorry may 8th you and james leblocky are doing uh deploying openshift is, is christian gonna be with us for that one too i think 
Oh, he might be. I might have added him on the schedule late and just oh, okay. forgot to update the blog. Um, yeah, so but we're, yeah, I can we're gonna him. try. We're gonna try. Well, it, I, that one's a little bit of a cooking show exercise because James has yeah. already done packet open shift. Um, but what I want to try and do is go through what he did and then actually write Ansible against the packet module. Nice. To automate anything that's required that's not like just the OpenShift install. So like, oh, hey, let's create the servers. Oh, what's the network space? Okay, let's generate the install config YAML file or whatever. Like whatever he did to do it, I'm going to try and build the automation while we do the stream. Nice. So that'll, that'll either I, be fun I, or I might, fail. I might be hiding in the background if you need Ansible help on that. Okay, one. cool. <laughs> um, but you yeah, can, like I'm, can, uh, I'm... You can complain while I'm doing it. I'm looking yes, somebody had a told... question about... Oh. OpenShift virtualization, um, but it doesn't appear to be in Weird. the docs. I believe that individual is correct. Installing on Red Hat Vert. Um, uh, Jafar helped him out, I think. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, Jafar, if you can figure out where the docs are for OpenShift Vert. That'd be great, buddy. No, that's installing That's installing on Rev. So, creating a okay. virtual machine template on Rev. Looking in the docs for four. Today, yeah, no, this is. Rev. I'm looking for the it's OpenShift like for docs, which it doesn't look like they landed. Oh. I'll ping Allie. Maybe we'll get this yeah. answered soon. Yes. Because that's you. it's Tech Preview now, right? Uh, we announced. Or was it GA? It, I thought there was an announcement. Let me look at the blog. Let's go to the blog. <laughs> Let's go to the blog. <laughs> you should see my eyes. They were awesome. Uh, let's see. What am I looking for? Virtualization, virtualization, Windows Server containers, developer preview, uh, container platform. Oh, wow. Red Hat tweeted that we were going live. That's nice yes. of them. No. Uh, yes. The, Open the, to virtualization, April 28th. The, you containers KVM and your I don't. You want me to open that? That's for Andrew. I mean, that's what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I, I don't know if that's the docs you're talking about, though. Well, it's not docs, but I'm just, I'm just trying to see. Does this talk about it going GA? Uh, you know what? It might be in the press releases. All the stuff that went GA last week, I guarantee mm. it's on the press release page. Mm -hmm. VMs and containers. Yes, the internet. OpenShift virtualization. OpenShift documentation for installation instructions. For how to configure and multis. Together. together oh. at last. The docs for container platform 4.4 are 4.4. -in. What? That's this. Yeah. Oh, because it, it's still CNV. It might be in the 4.3. I bet it's oh, like a build okay. issue or something. Oh, okay. Because that probably linked to latest, but it's actually not latest. Right, so it's actually something different now. Oh, no, the link attaching a virtual machine to multiple networks. That's not what we want. Okay, so I've, I've yeah. OpenShift container 4.4 cluster installer CMV activities. Install. Yeah, I think be, with the renaming, the. Um, Quick install. It got, yeah, so the whole section. So 4.3 has a section called container native virtualization. It right. looks like 4.3 that disappeared. So four four, four, four yeah, sorry, definitely four, four. yeah. Um, so my guess, uh, who asked the question? It was Sasha and Cloud. So my guess, Mr. or Mrs. or gender neutral Sasha and Cloud, uh, this is just not published yet. Uh, yeah, it's one of those behind the, the scenes. Person. Yeah, and and practical yeah, Andrew hey. says available architecture say? installation managers. Yeah, uh, it, yeah, platform. Andrew, we got your. Yeah, is that our Andrew? Practical Andrew is our Andrew. Yeah. Hi, Andrew. Um. Anyway, yeah. So, so I ping the docs person. My guess is that this is just a uh, an accident. I'll, yes, I will fix the blog thing. Um. Actually, I can do that right now. If, if looks like the CMV section went missing. Forward. Nice. There you go. We can now we have third parties finding bugs while we're doing Twitch Live. <laughs> yes. Oh, awesome. At I least mean, it's just hey. a docs bug. It's right. Like, like uh, and it's not like a like a awful docs bug. It's like somebody forgot to push the button. Docs bug. Uh, I think it's it's. I guarantee. I shouldn't say I guarantee. I I have a high degree of confidence 
that it is related to the naming change. Um, right. Then again, yeah. four four just went GA like today. Right. right. Like, like the bits just went out or whatever. Like I think they flipped the thing right now or are starting to flip the thing right yeah, now, right, much. to make it available. Um. Yeah. So let me put this Twitter, up Twitter. there, and uh, you can talk for a moment while I ping. I'm just looking at. What are, what are you looking at? I'm looking at buttons in the in the live stream interface or whatever. Oh, okay. Wow. All are right. you speaking about Rev or OpenShift virtualization? OpenShift virtualization, which was the question that Sasha and Cloud had asked. Um, oh, I. You know what? It's funny. So I completely misread the the question, which actually is about installing on Rev. And so I'm like, no, 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 that's not. That's not that like mm. it's not about installing on Rev. So, yes, the original question was install on Rev, and there's there's docs for that. Um, yes, the OpenShift virtualization docs are definitely missing. Jafar is now laughing at me, which is fine. Well, you know, Jafar that's all does you want. That. Soon you'll be up here and you can get laughed at. <laughs> yeah, your turn. Your, your turn, turn is coming. <laughs> oh man, I need a cooler background. So sad. Well, you know, I think what what you need is just like an ankle adjustment, right? Like, wow, but this is where the treadmill is. I'm not gonna move. Oh, that's so right. Many you got the walking desk deal, uh, which I'm just standing on the treadmill. Like, I could very easily. Not you could start walking. Stand, I could. All right, I'll start walking. So, like, why do you do this? What do I do? What? what? Why do you do the walking desk thing? Oh, I don't know. Supposedly, it's healthy or something. Supposedly it's healthy, yes. yeah. And, indeed. I got my little my little Ura ring that tracks my sleep and my fitness and stuff. Oh, is that what you went with? Okay. Uh, yeah, my I yeah, this is the one I chose. It's pretty good. It seems to have some trouble where, uh, like, if I wake up in the middle of the night and start reading or whatever because I can't sleep, like it it still thinks I'm asleep. Because you know my heart rate, and my, oh, my breathing are really like, low, so like it doesn't really you just know. rolled over, yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> so like sometimes, so I'll like I'll like do do one of these while I'm reading or whatever, like to try and make it know that I'm awake. Not that you know it really matters in the grand scheme of things, but it's like right. darn it, I want Still. more accuracy. Yes, exactly. Right, like the good people... old sleep reading issue. Yes, sleep sleep reading. Sleep reading. Yeah. I've been. It's like uh, I don't know. Whatever. I I tend to wake up at three or four in the morning and like just i'm like wide awake and so I'll read boring investment newsletters for like 45 minutes and then i'm definitely asleep that will do it mm -hmm. that would probably put me to sleep too to be honest with you yes last last night's material of choice was uh reading about an oil company hmm. interesting um is so sasha and cloud 99 is your walking metrics available with prometheus, with prometheus. No, unfortunately no. well actually so could you the, the well so the treadmill has bluetooth um okay. i've not installed the app on my phone so i don't know uh what it would take to get the data out of the phone app to get it into something to then be able to graph it with prometheus are you serious <laughs> Has someone done this before? That's really what I'm trying to figure out. Um, well, he was at Sasha was asking about the treadmill, um, but the Ura ring would also be interesting. I yeah, I I'd have to log in to Ura and see like how I can if I can download or export my data. Um, no. well, let's okay. see. All right, the app here on my you, phone. You want to talk about some open shifty stuff? <laughs> I, I mean, we can. If we have to. I mean, if you want. Uh, so. Um, let's see. What was recently discussed at Summit? That's a good question to ask. We talked about cluster so management. many things. Summit, ACM. yes, cluster management. That's a big one. ACM is a huge one. So let's see. What do you know about ACM right now, Eric? I hear you typing away rapidly. What do I know about ACM? So ACM came to us out of IBM, um, mm -hmm. was kind of uh, rooted in the original multi-cluster manager, right? So we've got an effort to open source that solution, um, but the, the the product that we have right now is uh, Red Hat Advanced Cluster Manager for mm -hmm. Kubernetes. Um, 
and it does a couple of different things. So one of them uh, is related to kind of policy enforcement and audit. So, you know, I've got three teen clusters and I want to make sure that they're all security configured in the same way. And so it has a bunch of capabilities to do things like that. Um, I think it can also do kind of workload. Uh, I'm going to use the word audit, but that's probably the wrong word to use. But essentially, like, I've got an app and I want to make sure that it's deployed in all my clusters. I think, I'm pretty sure it does stuff like that, too. Yes. Yes, it does. So it can do, uh, so I was in a testathon uh, a few weeks ago uh, to help kind of fledge out the, the before it went GA offerings. Um, and there's kind of like three main pieces to the product, right? Uh, ACM includes the cluster management pieces itself, which any certified cluster ACM can reach out and help you manage through that single pane of glass that people are looking for so much nowadays. And in general, it worked really, really well, right? Like you pointed it at a cluster, you gave it the details it needed, uh, whether it was spinning up a cluster or just importing a cluster it was pretty, pretty simple, right? Like if you wanted to install uh, and I wish I had screenshots available, but I don't right the second, and I don't have it spun up anywhere either. Uh, is there but not if, like a video on YouTube? There was like a whole. There, there is demo. a video. Uh, I have it actually. If you want me to see can, the link, if you can bring it up in your browser, I then we can share it with everyone. Can bring it up very quickly because it is super cool. But yeah, the idea is you can add whatever cluster you want. Um to as long as it's a certified cluster of course to acm and manage it that way but then the product has some as some aspects around application deployment and management that are yeah, incredibly worthwhile to check out as well as some um of the the security policy procedures that i think are very very nice to kind of bake in to the product itself so i'm gonna hit full screen on this and just let it rip how about that eric that might actually not look uh, right over zoom it's probably gonna get messy yeah here let me just drop you the link and if you want to figure out how to just pull in a browser window real quick oh um this this could this could get exciting yeah this could get exciting right like this is live on the fly stuff uh, so i can keep talking about acm though Sure. Uh, let's see. Where did you send me that link, by the way? If you uh, did Slack. Sorry. Oh, I'm not. I'm not slacked on the computer while I'm uh, doing this. Good. Put point. it in the Zoom chat. Put it in the Zoom chat. Off it goes. Oh, but now I have to find that. Uh, what happens? You don't know where do the Zoom this? chat. Is. I don't know where the Zoom chat is oh, either. I'm sharing my I'm screen. Probably now sending the Zoom chat. I'm definitely yeah. sending the Zoom chat. Okay, I got it in another window. There you go. Um, cool. It went not out there. Not that it really which... matters that I'm sending the Zoom chat because we're no. going to send the video. I'll right. Go away. The pro I, I think the Fixed. hardest part is typing and talking at the same time. It's actually not as Can easy. Can you as type you and think. talk and walk at the same time? That's no. The if if you are far excelling me right now, sir. <laughs> I, I wasn't. I wasn't saying that because I was trying to prove. <laughs> oh, it's, it's doing something. It's oh, playing. What? Oh. Okay. Well, but the audio is playing, not the video. <laughs> so I gotta, Whoops. I gotta figure out how to add the. Uh... Oh man! All right, let's see what we can do here. So turn off studio mode, mm -hmm. and I got to add source, which is gonna be a window capture right. of YouTube. So this is us doing live broadcasting, really, really live. Really live OBS editing oh. uh, is happening right now. Introducing Red Hat cluster. There it is. Oh, we got somebody just did something, but I'm now covering that whole thing. Oh, you're broadcasting um, your OBS. Matto is now following. Thank you. Or Meadow, I guess, because yes, it has a three in it. Okay, so now I've shrank the, oh, yes. the browser window to cover the your screen share. So I think this will work. And now if I full screen this... Yeah, baby. All right, I think we're in business. Kubernetes is everywhere. All right, let's see what happens when I play this. Can you? Well, never mind. Is everywhere. There are all sorts of redundant security and ops tools when it comes to managing Kubernetes clusters. Whether it's a single cluster that you need to get security information to secure, which is now being used by developers and customers, or multiple clusters with many ops tools and distributed business 
through is it yeah the audio is not coming through i hear it audio is not speaker. coming through well that's boring yes so it's supposed to come through it says desktop audio it, it's right there i see it i seen it i seen it um do i need you should, you could add the desktop sound as input in obs yeah, but well. i already have the desktop sound as input and it shows like Sound. And it's playing over your desktop sound, right? Or it's is it definitely playing over... playing over my desktop sound. This is fun. <laughs> Let me All try. Right, so... I'll try one more thing. And then we'll audio output capture just for giggles. Yeah, try and just capture that window. And then and if not, I can just capture default, which should already be captured. But whatever. Let's give that a try again. Okay. Go back to this, go back to beginning, hit play. Emerging cloud native environments, teams right. that are adopting Here containers can all agree Kubernetes is this, everywhere. Teams can also agree that there are significant obstacles that when it comes to managing Kubernetes clusters. Whether it's a single cluster and dealing with security, configuration drift, and pushing applications from development to production, or multiple clusters with many consoles, distributed business apps, and inconsistent my computer's dying. Distant security controls. Organizations are challenged with it. Oh, God. Streaming errors. Ensuring compliance, Buffering. monitoring okay, usage, bad. and maintaining consistency across environments. I think we're back. Red Hat Your Advanced side side. Cluster Management for All Kubernetes is, is a complete end-to-end -end solution that, that provides visibility into your entire back. Kubernetes domain with built-in governance and application lifecycle management. There's no need for disparate tools and multiple logins. Through a single console, you can centrally manage all of your Kubernetes clusters from Red Hat OpenShift, deployed on-premise, on bare metal, and in public so clouds, as well as clusters computer. from public cloud providers like AWS, Azure, right Google, and yeah. IBM at scale. Easily create and destroy yeah, no, clusters, identify right health, before, and apply uh, updates really consistently through all really clusters and pods, and quickly okay, identify so and troubleshoot problems with sharing. dynamic search. Mitigate risk so and ensure compliance with the ability to create and automatically enforce both industry standard policies and custom policies to meet the needs of your organization and comply with industry and regulatory standards. You can also get details on cluster compliance and enable evidence collection for audit purposes. With integrated and advanced application lifecycle management, you're able to define and deploy applications across clusters based on policy. Quickly view your application topology. Apply placement rules to easily move applications among clusters, even between multiple cloud providers. And deploy and maintain day two operations of business applications distributed throughout your cluster domain. Red Hat Advanced Cluster Management for Kubernetes addresses the challenges of managing Kubernetes clusters across a range of environments and simplifies day-to-day -day operations by providing a unified platform for multi-cluster management, policy-based governance, risk and compliance, and advanced application lifecycle management, all in a single solution. Learn more. Contact us today. We'll start talking about that. It's done. There it goes. Creative comments. You can re swizzle it to your liking. So, yeah, my uh, playing a YouTube video while trying to share the things and do the things that, that, that my not computer so does not. Well, it's just my computer gets angry. Wow, okay. look at my CPU. It's really angry. Well, because it's got to decode the YouTube on my side and then turn around and re encode it. Mm -hmm. Um. Oh, and I'm also playing. Oh, no. Oh, you forgot to do the red screen. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Sorry, folks. Why am I now? I'm now sending the Twitch screen, it looks like. Okay. Oh, because I had to kill yeah. the browser thing. Okay. Now I think we're back in. Business. Are we back on audio? Well, we've been we've been on the whole time. Okay. We never went off. This is live. Live television. Live okay. television. We do see Got your it. browser. All right. Window. Cool. So let's talk about this. Uh application management right like what are you most excited about there 
Oh, somebody's saying that they couldn't hear us while the video was playing. Uh, so the thing I'm excited about with the application management is we, we really, really frequently, so let's, let's back up a little bit, right? So we started with OpenShift 3, um, mm -hmm. Red Hat, we were kind of under the impression that people were going to want, you know, big clusters, put all the things in the big clusters. It'll be great. Everything will be great. It's, it's great. Um, mm -hmm. but then customers kind of showed us that like they, they were actually okay with smaller clusters and lots of them, but then you get into this situation where, well, what's the reason why you're doing multiple clusters? And then once we have all these clusters, like, well, we have this cluster over here on this side of the planet. We have this other cluster on the other side of the planet. Uh, but we have this app that needs to run in both of those places. We're trying to do geo, um, you know, geographic distribution or whatever. And, and it, it became challenging to ensure with proper lifecycle management that you were running the right app components in the right clusters at the right time with the right versions and everything, right? So um, ACM basically can do that for you, right? Here's all the clusters, here's the app, make sure that it's running, you know, that make sure this image is in use in these clusters with these settings or whatever. So that that's why I'm excited about it because we finally now have a good answer to the question that's not this kind of uh, like, you can do it with your CI tooling and kind of figure out how to, if you there's a new deploy, make sure that it deploys to all the clusters. But like, how does your CI tooling find all the clusters? That's kind of manual or you have to write automation for that. So like, this is just much cleaner and sexier. So I am I am happy for it and excited for it. Yeah, I think the the, the industry trend, right? Like I've, I've been working with Kubernetes since, you know, the, the 2016, 2017 time. And like mm -hmm. everybody thought we were going to have these big, hefty clusters yeah, and tons clusters. of namespaces in them and lots of lots of management happening inside the cluster well it turns out it's actually a lot easier to run a bunch of smaller clusters and manage those is actually now becoming the the harder thing to do because we've hit this like size of companies just having well we spin up clusters for ci cd on the fly we spin up clusters to do x on the fly we spin up clusters to do uh you know uh what is it? load capacity engagements, right? Like we need to be able to like have better management of what's happening and, you know, making sure that if we spend something up to temporarily tear it down, that it actually happens. If we, if we deploy our applications, we want to make sure they land in the right spots every time, not hope that our CI puts them there every time. Um, so the, the big cluster to small cluster uh, scenario has like shifted. It is what it feels like in the, the market to me. Yeah. But yeah, the application deployment pieces, having like placement rules and having the ability to say like, you know, this version of this app has like this code behind it. And this next version, as we roll it out, has this other code behind it and having that kind of aligned very nicely into a clean interface where it's almost like a, uh, like a, you know, point and click deployment, blue green kind of deal at that point. If you have your app pre-baked, you're ready to go. But then, you know, for me, you know, coming from the, the, the DOD and InfoSec background that I have, the, the security and cluster policy management is a big piece as well. And, um, you know, during this testathon I was in, I didn't get a lot of time to like dive in and check it out, but there's ability to, um, you know, toggle a switch basically and say, I want everything this compliant go. Right. And like, yeah, it'll tell you what's awesome. wrong. It won't actually enforce, you know, that if you don't want it to, but yeah, like the ability to just sit there and say like everything that this thing is going to manage has to be under these compliance rules. Huge. Right. <laughs> like that is huge. You know, Cause I've had to have, I've been that person that's like, all right, we got to apply this NIST template to every single box in a data center before. Yeah. And to just not have to worry about that. And, you know, no matter what this cluster is going to be maintained in this declarative NIST compliant state. Oh, here's the audit log of that happening. All coming from the same system is even better because at that point I just tell the auditors, right? Like here's ACM. Do you need to go any deeper? If all my infrastructure is running on Kubernetes clusters out there, then no. Um, if you need to actually dive into the OS themselves, if it's running on OpenShift, then 
you've got everything right there available to you. Yeah. So having that all together in one place, huh, my infosec life would have been a lot, lot better. Uh, you know, if, if reality, if today's reality was, you know, happening back then. So yeah. I'm excited about that, that piece of it because I can just go out and tell a customer, right? Like you're going to have a cluster of, you know, cluster or a group of clusters that are NIST compliant that you're moving your applications to potentially, right? Like you just check the box. And if you move your application over and something gets flagged, you know what to fix, right? Yeah. Like yeah. it's, it's great. It's, it's a really great feature. It's not magic, right? Like it doesn't fix it for you or anything like that, but it definitely flags what's wrong. Wait, some, and, something OpenShift isn't magic? Doesn't somebody have a quote that says something like that? Who, who? I, well, I you know, magic, me. magic happens in many ways. Eric, what is your quote? Go ahead, say that it. Is, that's the quote that OpenShift that's isn't magic. Well, it's really OpenShift doesn't fix your bad application architecture, but whatever. Right, but yeah, OpenShift doesn't fix. You know, it it, it truly is not holy water right you can't just, <laughs> you can't just water sprinkle on it servers. everywhere and fix all the things <laughs> yeah don't 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 put holy water on servers either um is, is openshift the... like the force does it have a light side and a dark Ooh. side and hold the universe together i don't know if it holds the universe together but we're getting there it's, it um, certainly holds a lot of the universe together i mean pmw yeah. and like the that company in singapore that like uh, diverts emergency resources to people having heart attacks like all kinds of cool stuff yes yeah the the amount of application and real life helping of people that happens on OpenShift is uh humbling and uh you know grateful it to be here working on this product kind of deal um as far as the 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 cluster management piece of acm Right. Like we talked about importing a cluster, adding a cluster. It's like I remember the the, the screen so well. Uh, you literally like if you wanted to add a brand new cluster, you would you know go through and check if you had a customization of some kind of profile to add a cluster. You just run through the checklist. You say, you know, which piece of infrastructure you're deploying it to. Right. Like if it's if it's a AWS or. Uh, you know, some other cloud or, you know, your bare metal locally kind of deal, you tell it where to go and off it goes. Do uh, we, um, do we have we a have... stream? No, no, no. Do we have a stream scheduled for ACM? Not yet. I'm going to work with uh, the folks over there to get that on the books. They're mm, obviously Benny. very busy. Um, con converting the product over, you know, I mean, their story is they, they started at IBM and, you know, this is one of the great, uh, one of the great stories of the 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 IBM at Red Hat you know deal is that you know the the powers that be amongst the two organizations said this would really be a better product for you know Red Hat to kind of work with and open source and do its Red Hat magic thing with OpenShift yeah. as opposed to IBM maintaining it. So you know we had some products that went over to IBM. IBM had some products that came over to Red Hat. I think this is one of the best fits you know that I've seen as far as you know anything. Uh, like this ever right as far as like companies swapping projects which really never happens <laughs> um so well, not, yeah i mean cool the whole that, engineering group and product management yeah like the whole stuff. yeah it's not like you know like they just handed us the code base they brought the entire team over yeah. we brought them yeah, through cool. uh you know red hat uh you know our initial training everything right like we yeah. brought them on as if they were changing companies but you know behind the scenes it was very uh, you know, hopefully a, a smooth transaction for them. The, 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 that team is very awesome, but they are also very, very busy getting all the things, you know, red hatitized, right? Like yeah. making things the red hat way, making things the way, you know, that our customers expect to that, you know, user experience to be, uh, it was not trivial, right? So it took some time and they're still iterating on it and they're getting their feet under them. And, you know, after summit is when they said I should reach out. So it's <laughs> after summit as of right now. So I'll be reaching out today. Uh, um, so yeah, I hope to have them on a stream in the very near future for sure, because they would cool. definitely love to uh, show it off. Uh, they're very proud of their product and they have every right to be. There you go. Sounds good. Looks like our, our stream labs sponsor banner has uh, ceased ceased rotating Ooh. and ceased being present i will see if i can fix that fun uh let's see let me find so uh, 
I want to see if this... So what I want to show you all is... Um, it's if, I, if I can. If I can. Uh, if you can what? If I can deploy this thing to an OpenShift cluster right now. Should be able Are you going to deploy ACM? Yeah. Oh, I wonder if my 4.4 uh, cluster finally came up. Well, I sent you the details for mine that I spawned. Yours, I thought yours was 4.3. I gave you both. You did give me Options. both. Did you? Options. Options. Uh, <laughs> mine is also completed. And at this point, okay, cool. I, I don't well, know where yours went. Okay. But it's going to yeah, be difficult sure for me to share my screen. And stream. And, um, maybe. I don't know. We can we can try. Ooh. That sounds we very risky. Do you really? Okay. Up to you. Do you want me to stop? We, we can try it. I... What okay, so just tell everybody what kind of CPU you're you're using. Oh, it's it's I mean it's before. a Lenovo T four ninety with like eight cores. Uh, or at least Oh that's eight. right, you just got the brand new build. It's so. been a while. Okay. Um Yeah, but, so like, I mean it's it's we can try it until it explodes in a bio a ball of flame and then we can try something different. All right. I'll stop. Um there. okay. So when you stop your thing, all heck is gonna break loose over here. But I do have my four four cluster, so let me get. Okay, let let you get. I'll let you get settled here. before you do that. Right, so, so you know, you entertain chat, you entertain folks while I make a mess yes, of things in the background. Yes, this is this is this is what I do here. Um, did you ever walk did backwards? Ever, ever did on I the ever treadmill? Uh, Eric, did you ever walk backwards on the treadmill? If I try I and think... do that, I'm gonna fall down. I have not tried yes. to walk backwards. I mean, I probably could, but to like actually turn around and start walking backwards while I'm walking forwards and trying to talk. I'll get wrapped up in the cables and it's just, so I just opened my console here and I I think I, oh, I must've hit back to safety. I'm not paying attention. Ah, there we go. Okay. That's what I want. Yeah. Okay. So let's pull this out. Are, are you? All right. I've got this over here. Are you all ready so for this? I'm not let sure me I'm add back this. my desktop capture browser window. Um, we're not pulling audio from there, so that's going to be okay. So we're going to do login Red Hat OpenShift container platform. All right. And then I need to make that smaller. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. All kinds of bad things are happening right now. All kinds of stuff. How can he walk and do this is all... LOL. How all he right, can so walk and do all I this is crazy. I think I'm sending my desktop at this point. So I think you we're are. okay You're here. sending right. OBS. Oh, yes. Yeah. So now I need to, what is the username? All right. So this is the new login screen. So that's the, the new thing with OpenShift 4. Yeah, let's see. So you need to adjust your scene setting real quick, if you can, to do the red-blue swap deal. Oh, okay. Um, I need to swap red and blue. Done. It's in oh, the scene gosh. settings. Now I'm sharing Zoom. Why are you doing that? Don't do that. Overview. That's what I want. No, you're fine. No, I was sharing the OBS for a second. <laughs> like, it got very Inception-esque. So this is 4.4. So right. it had that cool new login screen, which is interesting. And then we've got the mm -hmm. developer view, which isn't new. Um, should, I, should, I, should I try to deploy a database? <laughs> oh, but that would Do be from it. an operator. Would that be from an operator? Yeah, it would be. No results. Install a which, oh, got a new follower, Det Conan Kudo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank um, you for following us. I don't know why the rotating banner keeps stopping and restarting. Anyway, um, there's no, there are no choices for some weird reason. There's templated ones, but no operator ones. Oh, because I need to add the operators, right? I have to like, install the operator to then to the use the operator. View. Hmm? Go to the administrator view. Yeah, I'm in the administrator view. I just went to the administrator view, I should say. Oh, I'm not sharing my screen with Zoom back mm -hmm. to you, so you have right. to watch Twitch, <laughs> Twitch yeah. to see it. Okay, I'm mm -hmm. there. It will take a minute. Okay. My bad. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. the problem I had with Amy the other day. Because if I share... If you start sharing on Zoom, you If will I start sharing my screen, you. well, then we'll lose the webcams. Because I don't think I can find... Right the zoom yeah, window yeah, yeah. when I'm sharing my screen. 
which is not fun. Right. For anybody who's watching, if you have a contact at Microsoft, tell them to find Eric Jacobs from Red Hat because Skype has this cool thing that we could use to make this stream a million times awesomer, but it doesn't work on Linux. And so I know it's all Steve Ballmer's fault because he doesn't really like Linux and there's video evidence. So it's not like I'm making things up. But anyway, the point is, if you know somebody at Microsoft, uh, I want to get in touch with those folks at Skype because the thing underneath the thing works on Linux, but the Skype thing doesn't work on Linux. And we want to fix that because we like Linux at Red Hat. So anyway, that being said, Chris, I'm in the administrator view. You want me to go to the operator hub? Yes, go to operator hub, install the Couchbase operator. I want to see Couch. Couchbase operator. Do I want the marketplace one or the regular one? The 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 enterprise uh, from Couchbase one. Well, so I see the, Couchbase the operator. The non Apache. The non Apache, not the Apache Couch DB. Right. Right, but because we launched the OpenShift marketplace. There's now the marketplace operator, which I think is the one where I can basically uh, like give right. them my credit card to purchase it. See, there you go, purchase button. Yes. Yeah. Thank like, you, Tutalu. Yeah. I guess two T's and then other. Um, and since I don't have any money, I'm not going to purchase that one. So let's go install mm -hmm. the regular Couchbase operator. Um, yeah. where do I want it? All namespaces? I guess I want it no, to be available. You to, no. Create a new. Sorry, create a new project first. Oh, fine. Uh, so let's see. It's like it's a drop down or something. Uh, projects. Create a project. May the 4th. There you go. Create. Okay. Operator Hub. Couch. Install the Couch Base Operator. So that's weird. I searched for Couch again, and the yeah. results came back in a different order, which is funny. Ooh. Okay. May the 4th. Wow. Well. Update channel stable, approval strategy automatic, because, hey, mm -hmm. if Couch says it's good enough, it should be good enough. Let's do it. Yep. Cannot update, Couchbase, operator, installing. Okay, here we go. Up to date. How is it both installing and up to date? <laughs> so that, many... Uh, isn't that kind of a one or the other so, thing? No, well, it happens so quickly, right? Because it's not like... It's not a super heavy operator, so it just... I think it's one of those things where it's like it's throwing out statuses so fast and then the UI is picking them up so fast, right? Like it just gets out of sync, right? Well, but I mean, it, it says it's still installing, but underneath the word installing, it says it's up to date. And so I'm just a little confused. So the about... operator, uh, I think. Oh, succeeded. Okay. Well, this, whatever. Yeah. The, the CSV setting, I think, is up to date is what that means. Okay. I could be wrong. So we have the operator. Anyways. We're in, like Flynn. So now cool. I should be able to, as a developer, add a couch. Yeah. So I see the couch base operator pod itself. Look at that. So now I if I go to add now. what? I don't see what you're seeing, but anyways. I know. You just gotta wait. No, I know. But what I'm seeing on the Twitch stream. You're is seeing Twitch again? Stream oh, manager. Why did it? It's like changing the browser source source without asking me or doing things. I think when I change... Are you go are you like changing between browser windows? I did. Okay. Just change between tabs. I, I also am doing that. I have, this, I have our Twitch stream in a different browser window so that I can interact with our lovely guests. Right. But apparently it causes its own problems. Anyway, it, database. Right. Oh, wait. It was just there, and now it's gone. You said it's conceded. It like was there for a flash. That's weird. So Ooh. Couch doesn't show up as a database, but it does show up as in all items. We might have to let somebody know about that. Yeah. Okay. Maybe Couchbase is not considered a database. <laughs> No, it's considered a database. But it's a couch. It's a couch base. It's not a database. Maybe there. Maybe that's one of these things where, like, we're not a database company. We're a couch base company. I don't know. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and make maybe. a cluster anyway. They're not a couch company. I know that. They they do not sell couches. 
they hope the the purpose of using the operator is to make the use of couch db comfortable simple. and and soft and supple like a couch operators True. do that like for a you very 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 nice couch yes um yeah so, so, so it's weird like your my obs window is to the right on, a, on my laptop screen and i've got like a monitor in front of me and so my webcam is here so if i want to look at our viewers i have to look at my yeah. webcam but if i try to look at you and i look at obs i'm actually looking to the right but you're down right so i have to look at my space bar to pretend like i'm looking at you brady bunch style <laughs> Um, oh my goodness! But anyway, so I'm gonna deploy this couch cluster with all defaults, and we're mm -hmm. gonna see what happens. Yeah, because we're gonna do it live. Let's let, let's talk about the marketplace after this too, because I think that's important. Um, Since we kind of we could just talk about the over it. Well, while that yeah. does something someday, I will open Shift Marketplace. Let's ask the internet. Well, where is it? Yeah. yeah. The breadth and reach of the OpenShift Marketplace. It is a blog post from 2017. Mm -hmm. That is not what we wanted. That's not the right thing, sir. But we've had a vision. We've been executing on that vision <laughs> for quite some time now, apparently since 2017. Red Hat launches OpenShift Marketplace from ZDNet. I don't, we, you would think that it would be like the top result on our Marketplace. homepage. Marketplace.redhat.com Okay. the actual uh, like site. Um, I guess we don't optimize for DuckDuckGo. Well... It's brand new, so who knows if it's picked it up yet, right? Like, so take, where's my couch base? Yeah. What's the operator doing, if anything? It, yeah. It's entirely Cluster possible. setup failed. Okay. Secrets not found. Oh, I didn't follow the oh, directions. Oh, yes, that's right. You, do you need a you need a just blank secret real quick? I got one. You got one? You gonna send it to me over Zoom? I could just follow the directions. Oh, computer struggling. Yes, um, your audio was all right, very so bad. let's do this. Let's go back to more. Where topology? No. How do I? F it's on. How do I find the CR in this view? Because I want to delete it. CR in this view. You know what I'm talking about? I don't know if you can. Is it is it in topology under there somewhere as a little circle dealy? No, this is the operator. If I click that. Actually, if I click this, it doesn't even do anything. Um, details, build services, routes. I think you got to go back to the other view. Yeah. Well, what is this? Group by application. That's not useful. Project details. Deployments, pods, PCs. Yeah. Mm. Request for enhancement. That's for sure. All right. Administrative yeah. view. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, projects. May the 4th. I don't know why I went this way. This is totally the goofiest way to get that where where I need to go. So we want custom resource definitions. <laughs> Somehow I've selected that and dragged it. Okay, so we want our couch couch based cluster, yeah? Yes. Instances. C B example, yes, delete. Go away. Delete. Bye bye. Bye bye. That is both one of the best and worst Saturday Night Live skits ever. The one where what, they're the they're on skit? the airplane and it's like the the captain and the flight attendant yeah, yeah, standing yeah. at the exit. Yeah. Oh gosh. Uh -huh. I, can, I can I can picture that whole thing in my head right now and it's awful. Um, but I think that was state when David Quaid was still on Saturday Night Live. Oh, wow. Required parameters, auth secret. Provide the name of a secret that contains two keys for username and password. Documentation. Okay, so so for those who are still watching after this flaming disaster of a experience, um, when you deploy this operator, it actually wants, what? 
It requires a secret first. Yes, yes. it requires a secret that contains the username and the password um, that the database will actually instantiate itself with. And somewhere in the documentation is that secret. Uh, deploying the cache base server. Where auth secret? This field displays the name of a secret that should be used. Should I just reference dropped the name a of secret a... in Go ahead. chat for you. In the I Zoom just chat? just a secret in the Zoom chat. Oh boy, yeah. this is going to be bad. Because now I've got to find the Zoom window. It's fine. It's, and then it's a I have to find secret. the Zoom chat, which is going to make our faces disappear. And is really... Zoom lost is there a better the... Place? Huh? Is there a better place for me to send it to you? Do you want me to... No, not right now. Not without me signing into some other service, which will inevitably... And of course, I've lost the... Yeah. Uh, I've lost the window again, so now I have to go back to this because, you know, Alt-Tab just makes things bad. Okay, so now I have to go back to the OpenShift UI, and yep. we can go to create a secret, which is in which... There we go. Secrets. You just copied and pasted it. Yep. If you go to... Well, but the secrets, issue... Go ahead. Go to, go to Workload Secrets and the Administrator View. Yep in that namespace and just drop it in. And yeah, so this is a key value secret, I guess? Yes, uh, but you can just use the YAML. Use the YAML, Luke. Um, can um, I just create from YAML? From YAML, look at that. Yes. Unfortunately for us, Zoom has you butchered have to... the indentation. Oh, well, that... Ugh. Is that password and username, are they UU encoded, Base64, or are they just... Yes, yeah, those... just Base64, just Base64. Oh, no, i got to remember Base64. Oh, actually, I probably don't have to remember anything. An error actually, occurred, cannot be handled as a secret, illegal data. Your data is illegal. Oh, is type outside of opaque? Oh, I think I, type is not indented. Is I bet that's what the issue is. Yeah. So an error uh, occurred. Name, namespace cache base not found. Okay, so that's going to be May the fourth. This is actually kind of cool. Like even though I'm completely clowning this and totally screwing it up, the UI is actually mm -hmm. telling me useful information exactly that I need yes. to know. So yes, yes, yes. Right. Uh, yes. Jafar sir. is too in the chat. So if Jafar, you well, I can't Jafar, see if, if I try exactly and open the chat, it. it's going to mess up. <laughs> it's going to mess up all the things. I could try and open a terminal and then open the other chat application and then run that, but this is just this is way too much live. Okay. Way so now fun. let's go back to the developer okay. view. We will add our workload, which is a not database database, and we will create this and then we will make sure that the auth secret is cb example auth which it is right mm -hmm. that's what you called yes. it okay yes that is the default try again that it asked for uh, i've got the sports so center you... like thing playing in my head for some reason now do 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 so okay probably creating a pod delete <gasps> the cluster success okay good if i look at cool. pods there is a pod cb example zero okay the operator awesome. is doing things and stuff. If you see the the triple zero or quad zero one, then it's building, and you should be okay at some point. Yes. So should I look at the logs of the quad zero one? Is that going to be interesting? To me? Um. It, well, you might want to look at the logs of the operator itself. The operator just said that it was launching the pod, and then it, it hasn't said anything interesting since. Right. So go the to example the zero is still in container creating, which might be why there's a... That's a problem. Well, no, it's, not a it's problem. just pulling it's the image. Just a while. It's I'm sure yeah. the image is like bigger than a couple megs, and you know we're using yeah, up all the bandwidth of the tab. internet with this stream right now. So yes, the entire internet is struggling because of us. <laughs> At least my computer is. Possible. All right, so that's still sitting in container creating. It it might take a minute. Yes, or the uh, issue I've seen is that it fails due to uh, some resource limits that are baked into the default uh, uh, config. Can I find so, yeah, the I've events got of the cluster? All right, so let's go back to administrator view. It's right view. there. It's right there. What's no, right no, no, where? just go right there, hit events. It's it's right there under the uh, the pod view. You can just look at the events for the pod and see what's going on. Oh, I see what you're saying. Uh, or uh, no, I'm sorry, not the pod, the cluster. 
the cluster that the, you created the couch in the cluster. operator view. Yes. The if you look at the I created for that. Operator yeah. view. How do I get back to the operator view? Yeah, you're going to have to switch to admin, I think. Oh, okay. Which is not perfect, but. Okay, so admin. So you want under the CRD? The, the cluster definition in the CRD? Is that what you're asking me to go to? Yes. This okay. thing. So Over CRD, we want two. couch base cluster. We want instances. We want CB example. There's no events here. Okay, fun. There's an event there, though. Readiness there's, there's probe failed. Where? Oh, failed. But it's not, it's not clickable. <laughs> Can't do anything with it. Oh, no. Tell me. Tell me what you want. If I look at the YAML and I dig in here, status. Still failing after five retries. Insufficient memory to satisfy memory quota for the services. Requested quota is 2048. Maximum allowed quota for the node is 1228. Yeah, go blow away the resource quota. It'll start right back up. The resource quota. There is there a default resource quota? So they actually put one in. Oh, um, thanks. It's under limit. It's under limit ranges right there on the left hand side. Oh, this is like a default setting on the cluster itself. Yeah. Uh, this limit range looks fine to me. There's defaults. Oh, I see what it probably is doing. Ye yeah. The issue is the default, yeah. and I bet the couch doesn't specify it's, what it wants. It's buried under the cluster-wide, yeah. Yeah. No, limit ranges. Right, yeah. So what the issue is is that couch yeah. probably doesn't explicitly ask for anything, and the default probably blows it away. I don't know. Whatever. Maybe, yeah. I haven't all right, let's go back had to Had all the time in the world to troubleshoot it, yep. Yeah, requested quota... Maximum allowed quota for the node? That's weird. Um, so what did you want me to look at now? That I blew that away? Should you it blew just it magically away? Go fix back to, itself? Uh, I don't know if it magically fixes itself. I think after five tries, it stops giving up. So you're going to have to uh, blow it away. And blow it away again. <laughs> Okay, I, so that is the will... idea of an operator, right? Like you just push button these things. Push all the buttons. Yep. All right, so let's create it again. Oh, that's annoying. That is really annoying. If you create the cluster from this view, it doesn't inherit the default. Hmm. Interesting. Hope somebody's taking notes for all these bugs I need to file. All right. Oof. Add. Database, not a database, couch base, create, uh, CP example auth, yes, we're good, okay, create, all right, there we go, that's the deployment of the operator, managed by couch base operator, couch base cluster, there we go. Okay. That's better. Oh no, something went wrong. What? This uh I think this is a this is a UI problem. Oh, the status field thing? Yeah, don't worry about that. No, no, no. There's a UI issue with what I'm doing right now, so don't worry about it. Oh. Okay. Get it. Oh. Nope. It's not just me. I thought it was related to being in the developer view, but it apparently it is Oh, is this a cookie problem on top of it? Oh boy, this is fun stuff. Oh, did you, did you not get enough time to blow away? No, it's not it that. So uh, do, uh, I had the developer the and the administrator view open in two different tabs, and then I tried to go to the couch base example. Yeah. Nope, it's still busted. Something's up with my UI here. So I can't look at the CR instance anymore. So we'll just have to go to the pods and that'll be what it'll be. 
to the pods, Batman. Do do do. Um, except that the pods are not <laughs> there. The pods are no longer. It's even. It appears to be even worse now. Weird. Try what is what is left in the namespace? Uh, Lingering. Um, this is weird. So it says it's working. Node status is working, but okay. in the topology view, I don't have any of the pods. You don't see anything nope. working. <laughs> it's just uh, the operator. Is this one of those things? Is this one of those things where you have to open up the developer view and hit like the hard, hard refresh? Uh, I don't think so, but I'll try that. Okay. I mean, I, I think it's probably a stateful set that got deployed, and maybe the topology view doesn't show stateful sets. Oh. That'd be my yeah. guess. It does deploy a stateful set, I believe. Yeah, so workloads, stateful sets. Nope. Pods. What are you? Are you just a pod? Without an it associated be, deployment? Oh, Peter Lauterbach, thanks for the follow. Um, yeah, you, sorry, say again, Chris? It, I'm sorry, it should be more than just one pod. There, There is more than one pod. My question is about okay. what, how is the pod deployed? And it, it looks like the pod is just a pod. It does not look like the pod has a deployment or a stateful set associated with it. It's like a hmm. literal pod. It's the operator operating things. Yeah, very directly. <laughs> it's a very, very direct thing. So yes. I think this is a problem currently in the developer view is that pods that aren't managed by anything don't get displayed. Mm. That would make sense, though, given that um, if n if you had random pods, you would not want like them just floating around everywhere. But I mean, you kind of with that, you you want to be able to manage all your things in the developer view if it's in your namespace. So yeah, yeah. So if you go to project details and then go to pods, you can see the pods. And so at this point, I have two of the three instances up. Right. It'll get to four, I think. Three? Uh, three the, four. the CR was specified for three. For three. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forget. Yeah. Cool. There it is. There's the third one. It just happened. So, yeah. Let's talk about uh, the IBM Marketplace here in our last uh, eight minutes. Okay. Marketplace.ibm.com. So, or marketplace.redhat.com. Yeah. Marketplace.redhat.com. Do, do you want to take back over so, on the screen share? Yeah, you can stop, like, just drop your window there and you'll, yeah. Yeah, so let's see, how do I, if I just hide you. Look at that, now you're sharing what I was just sharing. We're good. Sweet. So the idea behind the marketplace is that you can grab uh, any kind of product and install it. Um, and any kind of product, when I say, like, obviously it has to be in the marketplace, but there's a wide dearth of tools that are available um, if you look at like monitoring, thanks for example, follow, Jeremy. <clears throat> hey, thanks, Jeremy. Um, there's everything from, you know, Zabbix to Dynatrace to, you know, a Red Hat process automation. And if you want one of these things, right, like if you wanted, uh, let's see, Instana or, you know, Sysdig Secure, let's do Sysdig Secure DevOps. If you wanted one of these things, you click it and Literally, you can just buy it right here, right? Like you don't leave buy the now. website. Buy now, Do it. right? Like it's it's like just click buy the two. button, and you know I can log in with my Red Hat ID, and off I go. You're kind not of paying deal. for it. I'm not paying for it technically, but I'm definitely going to log in with my Red Hat ID and see what happens. Assuming this is the right ID. Lots of OAuthing. And All right, I'm gonna stop walking. It's been an hour. It's been an hour. Wow. Well, it's I I did right. twenty some odd minutes before. Oh, you did. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, like you run through the questions. You know, is your business located in the United States? 
you know, you need that for compliance reasons. Uh, I will, oh, mm, ah, I need to put in an address. Uh, yeah, I have, oh, well, you're going to show us your credit card number too. No, I am not going to do all that, but you get the idea because yeah, I just saw that the payment method, right? Like is all down here. Um, the, the idea is that you log in, you get exactly what you want, and then um, it's available to you to use wherever you need it, you know, however you licensed it uh, through that login process, right? So it's taking the the number of steps that are you know, involved in getting you know, a support contract and all these other things out of the box kind of uh, established, right? Like, you know, you want this tool, like you've done your due diligence and your research and everything, just come here buy it, install it wherever you need it installed, done. Buy now. Right? Like that's the whole premise. Buy here, pay here. Buy here, pay here. Don't have to worry about reaching out to anybody to say, hey, I need to add this thing and then (laughs) all this paperwork together. (laughs) If I don't pay the bill, does my cluster get repossessed? (laughs) (laughs) No, but it will be taken by the dark side of the force and retrained for the Sith. Oh, you brought it all the way back around. Ding, ding, ding. (laughs) Good job. Good job. Thanks. Thanks. I appreciate that. But yeah, there's like uh, any number of things that are available here for your your, your needs, right? Like streaming, storage, the whole nine yards. It's all here. Is there toast? Um, And it's all. Can I buy toast? Is there toast? Can you buy toast? That's that's usually my example. Let me just. You could make open chips make you toast. Search for toast. No, No, there's nothing available with toast in it. Sorry. I apologize for the lack of toast in the uh, Red Hat marketplace. No, um, no but there is a number of good uh, good technologies available for uh, purchase in the marketplace so that you can have them available immediately to you. And maybe one of those will make toast. And, you know, maybe you could use that in the making of toast or with the potential of having that toast do something good for your customers. So do make me a sandwich. Uh, marketplace make me a bagel with blocks and stuff. Ooh, <laughs> now you're talking, man. <laughs> now you're talking. Actually, yeah, man, having come from the Northeast while. and knowing what good bagels are, I'm very fortunate that probably the best bagel place outside of New York is like uh, a short drive from my house. So I can actually oh, nice. get good New York bagels whenever I want now. So now I never have to go home. Don't worry, Mom. I will come home. I promise. I will still visit. <laughs> I will come home despite being told not to travel. Well, I mean, After it's you all know, over. I promise the, I'll come back. Yeah. Once the traveling <laughs> is allowed or something. Yeah. Cool. All right. So listen, I've got to run. I've okay. got a, a, a hard stop at 1030 for a doctor's appointment. Mm-hmm. So I've got to jump off of here in we good? just a few seconds. So, so what uh, what video should I roll out with? If anything, so or do you know, we just go to black? we've got. Well, we're not going to go to black. We we have some assets that I just sent you the link for last week, and you know right. we should go to the, the 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 stream just ending, and then was there a stream uh, ending you know, video? A, there was a stream ending, or oh, I don't not, remember a stream ending video. Oh, I might be gosh. in trouble. See what I do when I send you an asset. Where to go? just had it general open shift bumpers twitch assets i gotta find the email is is the folder just called twitch uh the folder is called streaming uh on twitch Twitch assets assets. from gilbert yes uh do i want on black or full color i use the full color full color here we go like full color yeah so so yeah you see there's a stream uh, stream ending oh look at that i have totally neglected my download duties download mm-hmm. the stream ending video here put it in the right folder and then we're going to make a new some of the switch to studio mode and then we're going to make a new scene called ending and we're going to add a video source so proud of you for, oh, studio we're mode. totally doing it live it's so cute ending video <laughs> which i totally miscapitalized but that's all right because we're doing it live and now i'm going to go to my opt folder because that's where you put all things that are weird mm. and stream ending. i thought this is okay. weird but well the, the, i mean it's kind of weird the, the thing is weird yes 
whatever. Yeah, the, the, the foreign object. Okay, well, I'm ready to transition to the ending video and then hit the stop stream button whenever you want me to. I'm doing yeah, the thing where I mean, I'm looking to just, the side instead of looking down. That's okay. fine. I'm doing the thing where I'm looking all over the map. Uh, appreciate everybody joining us today. Thank you so much for everybody that has subscribed to the channel, watched us live, Absolutely. watched us stumble through uh, the installation of Couch. We will, we will be way four, more four. awkward and clowning in the future, I promise. There's there's no yes. doubt in my mind. There's more more buffoonery to happen, but also a lot more learning to happen as well, and that's what I'm most excited about. Yes, very true. Kudos. All right. All right. Thanks for joining Cheers us. Cheers, everyone. Bye. Appreciate it, everybody.